Hello, I'm Pamela Forward from Whistleblowing Canada, and welcome to this introduction to our third policy brief in a series on a whistleblowing case at Health Canada in the 1990s that is impacting us today. This very minute, as I am speaking and you are listening and learning, these briefs answer the questions we asked when we set out to try to understand this upside down, just plain wrong whistleblowing phenomenon, this contradiction of punishment for the truth teller and often impunity for the wrongdoer. This policy brief answers the question on how reprisals occur. What happens when you try to do your job the job you were given the responsibility and authority to do, and you are stopped by someone with power, but who has no competence in the specialty area. In this case, the evaluation of prescription drugs before they are approved for marketing. What are your options when you are aware that senior officials are making decisions that will surely cause harm to many people? What is your duty and your obligation as a professional, in this case, a physician? What happens when you insist on doing the right thing and when nothing changes and you eventually resign to be better able to warn people? What are your options then? What happens when the courts, that impartial decision maker in pursuit of justice, which we rely on to provide checks on organizational abuses of power, instead cloud the issue of the safety of the drug in question. And what is happening today with that unsafe drug? And what can be done to stop this illegal behavior of reprisals against truth tellers? Find out, read our policy briefs on how reprisals occur at www.whistleblowingcanada.com.